Tau Ceti is the 19th closest stellar system to Earth at 12 light years away and is the closest solitary sun-like star. An international group of scientists led by Miko Tumi of the University of Hertfordshire announced the potential discovery of five planets around the nearby star Tau Ceti. It was also mentioned that out of these five possible planets, the two farthest away, Tau Ceti E and F, were potentially habitable. Hi everyone, Vega here, and in the next of our exoplanets series, we are going to look more closely at the 18th and 19th nearest exoplanets to our Earth, Tau Ceti E and F. So, let's get to it. Tau Ceti is a relatively nearby star, and it's the closest solitary G-class star. Because of this, it's been made famous in much sci-fi literature and film. Indeed, as far back as 1949, the novel The Queen of Zamba referenced the inhabitants of one of Tau Ceti's planets, a pre-technological Krishna, and its struggle to adapt to a future radically different from its past. Indeed, it christened some of the other at the time fictional planets of Tau Ceti with the names Krishna, Vishnu and Ganesha. How fitting then that 72 years later, planets are no longer fictional. Tau has been studied and dreamed about so much primarily because the star appears extremely stable, with very little stellar variation, even less so than our own sun. Strangely however though, in contrast, observations have also detected more than 10 times as much dust surrounding the Tau Ceti system as is present in the solar system. To find Tau in the sky, we must make sure it's a clear night, as the star only has an apparent magnitude of 3.5. We once again use the Orion constellation and draw an imaginary line between the bottom left, safe, and the bottom right, Rigel. We then follow that line along until we find Tau Ceti. It's advisable to take a copy of this outside with you, as it's not the easiest star to find in the night sky. Tau Ceti, although it's fairly close to us, is smaller than our sun at 0.78 solar masses and 0.79 solar radii. This leads to a stellar luminosity substantially smaller at just 0.52 suns, which is the reason for its relative faintness compared to other local large stars like Alpha Centauri, Procyon or Sirius. Given its smaller luminosity, to put this into perspective, Tau's habitable zone stretches from 0.55 astronomical units, which is between Mercury and Venus in the solar system, and out to 1.3 astronomical units, somewhere in between Earth and Mars. There are currently confirmed four worlds. G and H, as we see here, are too close to town, but E and F, both super-Earths, are inside the habitable zone, just about. There are also three more unconfirmed planets inside the habitable zone, making the Tau system quite congested, and also a larger potential Jovian planet on the outside, as few as three, or possibly even as many as 20 astronomical units away. In this graphic, the planet PXP-4 is just a predicted planet based on current modelling, but there is no evidence for it yet. If it did exist though, it would be almost perfectly positioned in the system. So, let's push the focus onto the potentially habitable worlds of E and F. There's currently no information about their radiuses, and this means it's not possible to tell if they're a rocky, water or even gas worlds. However, if we assume they are composed of a water-rock mix, their radius might be closer to 1.8 and 2.3 Earth radii, respectively, making them large super-Earths. The planet Tau Ceti e orbits close to the inner edge of the habitable zone and receives around 60% more light than Earth does from the Sun, and this would make it potentially a hot planet, probably only habitable to simple thermophilic or heat-loving life. Its mean global surface temperature should be near 70 degrees Celsius, assuming it has a similar terrestrial-like atmosphere. However, it is unfortunately likely that super-Earths have much denser and heat-trapping atmospheres than Earth, and therefore Tau Ceti might well be instead dominated by a strong greenhouse effect, making it more like a super-Venus than a super-Earth. Without any knowledge of its atmosphere, we are not able to tell if it is a mildly hot planet, tolerable for simple life forms, or a very, very hot and indeed non-habitable world like Venus. Tau Ceti has an Earth similarity index of 0.77, assuming it does have a more terrestrial-like atmosphere. There are various possibilities for this planet then, and interestingly, much like on Earth, the planet Venus at high altitude experiences much colder temperatures than at sea level, or the Venus datum as it's called on Venus. The temperature at the highest point on Venus, Maxwell Montes, which rises some 6,400 metres above the Venus datum, is estimated to be as much as 70 degrees Celsius less than the temperatures below. While we know on Venus, that still leaves the planet completely unhabitable. 
could be very interesting on a planet like Tau Ceti e, which is thought to be likely a lot warmer than Earth but much cooler than Venus. In this depiction of Tau Ceti e, we see water in constant flux, raining down from the heavens only to evaporate almost instantaneously as it reaches the lower levels. Constant lightning and terrible windstorms punish the overbaked and over-energized world. We see, however, an interesting possibility that at higher altitudes, life has taken hold. Let's take a listen then briefly to what the sounds of this world might be like. So now we know about Tau Ceti A, what about the habitability of Tau Ceti F? It's almost the opposite planet, and given that the planet orbits closer to the outer edge of the habitable zone, it only receives about 27% of the light the Earth receives from the Sun. And this likely makes it a cold planet, probably only habitable to simple, psychrophilic or cold-loving life. Its mean global surface temperature should be near minus 40 degrees Celsius, assuming a similar terrestrial-like atmosphere. This does however make it warmer than Mars, and therefore more able to sustain more complex forms of life than we may find on Mars. However though, in the opposite way to its sister Tau Ceti e, it could actually be dominated by a strong greenhouse effect, which could make its temperature even acceptable for complex life, which requires temperatures from 0 to 50 degrees Celsius. Without any knowledge of its atmosphere though, we are unable to tell if it is a frozen Mars-like planet tolerable for simple life forms, or even an Earth-like world. Tau Ceti e has a similarity index of 0.71, and this assumes again a more terrestrial-like atmosphere. In this depiction, somewhere along the equator of the world, we see the potential Tau Ceti f planet. A strange green hue dominates the sky, due to a large percentage of chlorine gases in the atmosphere. Perhaps those gases arrived many eons ago on a chlorine-rich asteroid impact. The strange green gas condenses at minus 34 degrees Celsius, so in this frigid world it would echo and replace our own water cycle. What remains of the actual water on the world soon follows and begins a snowstorm on this beautiful yet terrifying icy world. Both Tau Ceti and F are very interesting planetary candidates for astrobiology that need to be confirmed by more observations. Neither fit the Earth-like distinction based on the little information we have of them. It is hard to tell which is better for life at this point without more information about their bulk composition and atmospheric structure. There is, however, one thing we can be certain of. Tau Ceti is the closest and most similar stellar system to our own solar system, and it does have potentially habitable exoplanet candidates. A single solitary G-class star, much like our own Sun, its planets could theoretically be even more habitable than our own Earth. In our future, we will no doubt have the desire to send probes to the visit the Tau Ceti system, and its radial velocity of minus 16.6 km a second is also in our interests and in our favour because it's moving quickly towards our solar system. In a slowly yet ever increasing battle to be the next system we visit, perhaps after our neighbour Alpha Centauri, Tau could be argued to stand high in the list if not even second place. Once the James Webb Telescope launches later this year, we may just find out some key facts about its habitable worlds that elevate it above and beyond anything else in our local neighbourhood and make it the number one focus for a second home after our beautiful sun. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thanks to those of you that are regular viewers and subscribers. If you want to support the channel further, you could consider buying me a coffee and I'll link this in the description. If you have any videos or subjects that you'd like to see brought to life, don't forget to let me know in the comments below just be your idea that next week shows up. Take good care of yourselves and look after your friends and family well and I'll see you on the next one.